Hi, my name's Steve from the Stone Crafting Workshop. Welcome. Today I'm going to do a review on this. It's the Ferrex Mini Bench Grinder from Aldi. It's a 120 watt double grinding machine and it's actually a favourite tool of mine. I've already got the previous version. Uh, this is a newer version. It's slightly cosmetically different and there's a couple of features different on it. And what we'll do, we'll take it out of the box and have a look at what you get in the box. And then we'll put it together and then I'll put it to use. And I'll show you why I love this tool so much. So join me in the workshop. So when we open the box and take it out, you've got the machine itself. Power cord. I've already had this out and had a look at it. You get a couple of bags with bits in and you get a flex drive and we'll go through that and I'll show you later. There's a couple of uh, Perspex shields which act as the guards over the wheels and we'll fit those on in a minute and there's a book of words and a book of instructions the instructions have, uh, are quite good, they're written in good English and uh, they give you pretty much all the information you want if you hunt through it. This model by the way is PGB 75G1 and as I say I have the previous model of machine which is in use in my workshop and later on I'll tell you why I decided to buy a second one. I was looking for it and I deliberately bought it, it wasn't an impulse buy. The machine itself is a twin wheel bench grinder. It's a very small machine as you can see against my hand size. It's very much a hobbyist grinder. It's certainly not for use if you want to sharpen big things like chisels or um, you know, lawnmower blades. It's no good for that whatsoever. It's a small hobbyist tool and the it comes complete with four wheels there are two spares as well in the bag just it out it comes with two spare wheels one of the wheels is a carborundum grinding wheel and the other wheel is a polishing wheel and it comes with one of each fitted on the actual machine itself it's got the brackets and all the fittings for mounting the guards. It also comes with a handful of, of um, burrs to be used with the flex drive um, and wheels. There's a couple of grinding wheels. They're all carbon under them. And um, as I say, it comes with flex drive and it's the flex drive, this flexible uh, tool that I think makes this absolutely a no-brainer purchase and I'll explain why as we go along. So first of all I'm now going to assemble this. So I've muddled my way through assembling one side of it. Let's, uh, let me show you how to assemble the other side. The instructions in the book are a series of photographs and they're not hugely helpful. Um, so what I suggest you do is first of all assemble it just with the nuts and bolts hand tight. You can go around afterwards and tighten everything up. So I think the first thing to do is to fit the um, safety bar at the bottom. And this is obviously to protect you from anything being dragged under the wheel. And the thing that's not immediately obvious is that if you look in the end here of the plastic, there's a recess that takes the nut so your first job is to fiddle that into that recess and press it home. Took me a few minutes to work that one out. It's not easy to locate it. It's just a bit fiddly. There we go. And there you see it's actually recessed in this plastic um, home here. And once you've done that, it's pretty straightforward and easy. 
get, you've got your knob that holds the, um, the slider on and you're going to need you simply take the bracket like that and put it on in if you put it in the position where it's actually going to be and then put your finger in the hole to hold the nut in place you've got to screw this through the plastic hole because the plastic hole is quite a tight fit until it starts to screw into the nut and there we are it's screwed into the nut doing it that way the whole thing is actually pretty simple and of course the nut is then locked in place so in future you simply loosen that and move this backwards and forwards depending on what size wheel you have on the machine and when it's in the right position you tighten it up okay you now have to fit the assembly for the um, spark guard and the um, grip guard and it's a bit more obvious you've got two small grub screws and these ones already came with the washer and the locking washer assembled on them so you just put them through the unit screw them on like that so they go through with the nut on that side And the only thing you'd have to now assemble is the is is the flex drive. Let's put that on. It fits in there, and this is a square drive, and it's got to fit in a square hole. And it's actually quite difficult to locate it in the right place, I find. As I say, I found this really quite tricky to line up. And the reason is that the fitting inside is not absolutely aligned with this hole in the end. By tilting it up I can see it. That's it in the right place. Just push it home. Important thing, this is a reverse thread. So turn it as though you're undoing a normal thread. Uh, you do read people who say that it doesn't fit, but it does fit. So that's the flex drive attached and on the other end of the flex drive there's the knurl nut with a single, you can undo that by hand, and there's a single collet which is a 3mm collet. So it takes standard diamond burrs if you're interested but burrs with a 3mm shaft and the What's different about this one from the machine I've already got is that this has a locking mechanism on the end, this plastic slider. So all you do is if you pull that back it actually locks the shaft. So you can put a tool in the end of the um, machine, the end of the tool, and then holding that back you can tighten it up and then tighten it up using the little spanner supplied although I normally find hand tight is enough and then when you release that the shaft is then loose to run. So let's plug it in and have a look at it working. Right so we're plugged in, power on. Now with these you've got a speed control dial here and the best thing is to turn that down low before you turn it on pretty much doing anything so that it just doesn't suddenly leap into action. So it's now on very slow speed. Let's tilt these back so you can see it. And if you look at the flex drive, it's going round. Can you see that? And and that's the thing running on full speed. And you can see why you need to tighten things up. One of these is loose and it's actually spinning up. I need to tighten that up.
So let's quickly talk about the machine while I'm tightening that up. The it's a one it's exact it's the same size motor as on the previous machine and it looks very very similar if not identical. And the difference is that the pre, my previous model had a maximum speed of 9900 revs per minute. This has a maximum speed of 11,000 revs per minute. So about 10% quicker. I don't know why that would be, but um, it might be quite welcome or not, depending on <laughs> how well it works, how long it lasts. So let's take the flex drive off and talk about it as a bench grinder. So let's have a look at how the machine works as a grinder. As I said, it's got two grind wheels on it. It's got a silica carbide, quite a coarse silica carbide wheel on one side. And it's got a metal polishing pad on the other, which is a soft fibrous kind of wheel. It's really not good at working on big things, on long things. So for instance, if you were to try and sharpen this knife blade on it, you would run the risk, you can do one side possibly by leaving the guard up away from this wheel, but you can't really do the other side without risking your fingers on the wheels. It just doesn't like working on long blades. Even a knife blade like this, one of my work knives, you have the same problem. You can't run along and sharpen it on both sides. You can do one side, but not the other. But for grinding smaller metal items it's very good. It's actually very good at sharpening small chisels. Let me show you. So, as you can see, it's quite useful for um, sharpening small blades. It's pretty good for sharpening small chisels, it's very good for that. And, uh, but for very small items, it's also pretty good. So anything small, you know, like a little something like this, if you wanted to grind or, um, you know, if you just wanted to grind the end off at all or something, it's a pretty good grinder. And if you need more power, you simply put it up to full power. And if you want to do something a bit more delicate and finer, you just slow the thing down. Very useful little grinder for small things. The thing I really like about this machine, as I say, is the flex drive. Let's put it on. And what I intend to do is to have this permanently set up as the flex drive. For when I'm using my diamond tools, and I do quite a lot of stone carving and stone crafting. And all my diamond tools have the 3mm shaft. My only doubt about this is how long this, this device on the end for locking the shaft is going to last. On the original model, on my first model, it just had a pin that went through it and locked it. But uh, that might be better. And so what I want you to do now is to think about this in comparison to a Dremel. Most Dremels are around about 100 watts motors. This is a 120 watt motor. And it's a much bigger motor than a Dremel motor. And also you have the added bonus that if you run it with these wheels on, with a stone wheel on at least one of these, it acts like um, a flywheel. You know, it helps with the process. And I'll show you quite how powerful this is, how reasonably powerful it is. If I 
can get a bit of slate. I've always got bits of slate lying around. Now I'm going to do this dry and because I'm talking I would normally do this wet or I would normally do it with a, a mask on and I've, I just think this is a great tool. So turn it down, press it on, turn the power up a bit. see that on that bit of slate. That's what I'm going to use this tool for. Here we are, the Ferrex mini bench grinder. This one has two holes in it by the way in the base so you can screw that down to a heavy base which is what I would recommend you do just to um, you know just a wooden base with a bit of weight to it just to hold it in place although when you're working I mean it didn't seem to creep around much which is pretty good. So what do I think? I think the tools are okay. I don't use carbo tools very often, carborundum tools very often, but they're okay. They're a nice little addition and I just think this is a great tool. This cost me 25 quid, 24 pounds 99p and I just think it's really a great value bit of kit and as I say, if you're thinking of doing um, Dremel type carving, then I think it's a no brainer. For 25 quid, you get, you know, a much better tool. The only thing I would say about it is that the, they're a bit mean on their supply of, what do you call them, collets in the end here. This little thing here is called a collet and it's the thing that as you tighten down the knurl nut that grips the shaft of the tool that you've put in it and what happens is they wear they wear pretty quickly if you're doing a lot of work you have to replace them now when you buy collets there are two sizes that you can get on eBay eBay is the best place to buy them and one size is and we're talking now about the shaft size okay one size is 4.3 and that's the type of size that was normally fit in a normal Dremel and the type that fits in my Parkside type Dremels and the other size is 4.8 a 4.8 shaft and they're the ones you go for you're going to need to buy a set of um, collets to make this a really usable tool but they're cheap and you can get them you know you can buy a set of 10 for about three or four pounds if you're willing to wait so that's the only downside I can think of to this machine to change the wheels you take off these covers on the end there's just three nuts and on this side there's a fitting with um, a split pin so you take off the shaft, remove the three crosshead through screws. So changing the wheels is easy. You simply remove this split pin. This then unscrews off of the thread here. You undo that nut and off comes the wheel. It really is a simple process. So there you are. I hope this is of some use to you and if you if you enjoyed the review please give me a thumbs up.
and if you want to see more about stone crafting and stone working and stone tools and what have you please subscribe to the channel <laughs> thank you for watching